Thank you. Uh, Rolando is going to fill me in all of them. It might be just you and I. Jeff is not here already. Okay, the meeting started. Ah, uh, th there's John. Uh, Here's what we Frosty. Frosty. What's happening? First question, were you able to get inside on your own? Well, I wasn't at first. I stood there for a minute in front of the door. Hold my phone out. As soon as I pull my phone out, go it. <laughs> oh, that's because the guy probably unlocked it. Well, he, there was a security. Yeah. Well, he came to unlock this door, and then and then when we told him that the other door needed to be unlocked, he went to unlock it. So he probably unlocked it from a desk or something. That or security be... unlocked it from their desk. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. But yeah, I was able to get in, obviously. John, can you hear us? Mr. Treasurer, not so much longer. No, we need to meet our new treasurer. Huh? We need to meet our new treasurer. That's the new treasurer over there. Hi, John. Did you ever How go? Doing? Did you ever go to that guy's place? No, I I, I want to bring you with, but I'm waiting for probably after the holidays. Go out on the Monday. That's your one of your dates available. Yeah, Monday or Fridays, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. I have class, so yeah, I've been pretty busy and, and with all the holiday stuff coming up. Yeah, until after the first of the year. Okay. Yeah, well, I have to find out where you sourced all the parts, though. Too. If, That'll, that'll help. Yep. Okay. All marked down. Nothing's changed. Email, everything's all the same. So I'll just, I'll just write them down here. Hopefully, don't we? I got a couple of folders that I need to Yeah, they are. Plus, uh, Ian and Dan. So you go home for the holidays? I do. Tomorrow. I can say you better leave early. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, yeah. Yeah, they're saying four to six inches Thursday and another two to four on Friday. And wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour, yeah. So it's going to be blizzard, whiteout conditions. So. Yes, except. Where I'm going, that same storm will hit a day later. Yep. Starting with rain and highs around 50 before temperatures drop and turn it into snow. That's always bad. That makes the actual road icy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rusty case. Right. Sister may have to stay overnight a couple of times with us because of it. Yeah. Or rather, cat. Uh, who is in her early 20s. <laughs> Who's in her early 20s? Your sister? My sister's cat. Oh, cat. Wow. I know. I, 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 I swear, honest to God, when her cat meows, it sounds just like Granny from the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. All right. I'm going to go out and grab a soda out of the machine. I'll be back in a minute. Okay.
Yeah. Hi, Travis. Hey there. Suddenly occurred to me that big storm they're expecting. Like plenty of club members have already left for the holidays. Hmm. Well, uh, Okay. I'm so Alan. Oh. We got a turnout where I get out tonight. Well, it's early. Yet. You got 10 minutes. And my sister-in-law just retired from here. Who's your sister-in-law? Carol Glines. Oh. You and her from HR. Yep. In fact, my brother-in-law is going to retire here. I've been sitting here and here. He works here, too. Who's he? Walt Cox, one of the maintenance guys. Ah, he's been here forever. This would be, um, well, I know Camino said he was going to call in. That's one more, but. There's Jeff. And Jeff is just calling in. So I don't think there's going to be anybody here right, except us. Mm -hmm. I was wondering with all the, the lane closures just down there, can you even get into the village? In? I don't know. Or it's anything like the last time. They didn't even have the all they had open was the lobby. Carry on over was all they had. They had no wait staff. Wow. All the wait staff called in. Uh -huh. 
or what what they had called it. We ended up going to the um, steak and shake and out on Elmore. You know the reason we went there is because the village in out there was closed. That one too. That one was closed. Well, it was closed for the night. For the night. Yeah. Which one is that? El on Elmore. Out on Elmore. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that was the night we went. Yeah. Yeah. And we ended up a second shake. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you, yeah. what'd you end up getting there? A second shake. Yeah. I cannot even remember. Probably a burger and a, and a shake. The thing about it is that uh, diesel second shake has diesel. changed a lot because they don't have they don't have uh, help. Yeah, they don't have a wait staff. So another guy, another guy, this he got diesel kiosks, little little kiosk TVs, and you have then you just have to enter your order the there, and then they call you to pick it up. They still want you to live a tip though. We may have to start bringing our own pies to the meetings. <laughs> There's no tip. Don't bet on the horses. I could do that. Yeah. Take my advice. I'm not using it. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like any young man. I don't know. I don't know who said that. My Take daughter, my wife. Please. 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 <laughs> my, my favorite quote is, even if you win your rat race, you're still a rat. That's my favorite quote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my dues. Uh, oh my God, no! Is everybody paying dues today? Should have stayed home. Oh, it needs to check. Who has money? What money? Rusty does. He gave me Whoa, twenty. Oh, I gave him cash. Ooh. Oh, that's gross. So oh, I think we should have a. Uh, we should schedule another. Like two, uh, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> if you can get out there. <laughs> oh. I need to get out there. I got five wheel drive. I got four wheel drive. I may not be able to get out of, get out of my driveway. Yep. My driveway is pointed north. <laughs> and I'm telling so you. So is mine. You get, you get five snowflakes. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't get out of my driveway. The city plows always wait until after our guys, our guys, have plowed the driveways. Of course. Before they come through. Yeah, they usually plow my shop oh, about two days later. Well, you know, I, I, I typically don't have a problem. Um, with snow plows coming to the side. I mean, I'm, I'm off the main road. I'm not directly on the main road there. But when you've got this much sitting at the end of the driveway and it's frozen ice, that becomes a little bit interesting because my snow won't be. Yeah. They used to, after the city went through, before I Sold it and my quad with a plow on it. So I go out and plow you in the driveway and finish plowing the street because they were that far from the curb. And yeah, you know, when they do that, then everybody's parking in the middle of the street. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have that anymore. So. Yeah. Well, you need a backup system then. Two. Long, wide planks you can use as a jumping ramp. Yeah, I've got that. Normally, I, I bought a big two stage snowblower. Oh, yeah, it actually goes a lot quicker than the plow. Huh. And I've got a riding lawnmower that I John Deere that I could put a plow on. Yeah, but I don't actually have driveway. My driveways are hard to put over. It's 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 big. We've had uh, one neighbor before they they sold the house. One winter we we had 
our two cars and their two cars in their driveway and still have room. Yeah. And I, uh, when I was teaching in this little town in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota, it was north central. We were about an hour south of Bismarck. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, first year I was there, it, it, it was predicted that there was a strong and a couple of other teachers asked me, do you want to go to Aberdeen today? Aberdeen's an hour east of us. You know, we just want to go shopping. And I said, well, sure, why not? I had a fourth income plan. <laughs> and so they come to pick me up and they said, you see that big cloud over there? Said, yeah, that's a blizzard coming. It's, it's all flat. Yeah, you can see it. So I'm not too sure why not. So we were fooling around and go to the movies, whatever. We leave about 10 o'clock that night. And it was snowing a little bit in Anderson. We got to the city limits, and it's like somebody pulled out a ship. So beautiful. I mean, it's like headlights are almost worthless. Now, the guy who invited had a full of my thing. Now there's virtually no snow on the road, it just blows it along. So the road's clear. But you almost couldn't see the light. And it's a straight road. So all I could do is we drive 60 miles an hour to a blizzard. Mm -hmm. And about oh 55 miles from Aberdeen. I come to the first town. And right in the middle of the road is like a three foot high river. So he just blows through it. And I have to follow him. And it's like, I mean, I like driving the fog. And our our blizzards up there would last for days. days. And we get we hit minus 80 windshield. I had to go, to, I had to go to Pier for a teacher's meeting one night. I couldn't get my car started. At 80 below, rubber tires freeze the concrete. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's like people just, it's like people don't understand winter until they spend a uh, winter in South Dakota. We had, uh, we had three, there were, at that time, there were three TV stations. ABC was Bismarck. And if you wanted to watch Monday Night Football, you had to have a an antenna with the rotating. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And then Aberdeen had, had a station, and then Sioux Falls had a station, but they had a, uh, uh, whatever, whatever, I can't remember what they call it, but, but they had a, they had a, uh, uh, a tower in Aberdeen. Translator? A translator, yeah. And uh, the first winter I was there, that tower blew down. Oh, it was in November. <laughs> they said it would not be up until April and May. So it's like I have one TV station that was in the city. It was 60 miles away. And then there was there was cable then, but the only way you could get cable was if they were running from A to B in your in the middle. Mm -hmm. Which we want. Right. You, you just you don't understand what winter is like until you spend the winter there. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. I'll stick to winters in Vermont. <laughs> I take Texas. For... Shall we? <laughs> shall we call the meeting to order? Let us call the meeting to order. Yes. All right. So we've got a few people. We've got me, Sam, Cecil, and Rusty here in person. And we have my Byron, Alan, Jim, Rolando, John Travis, and Jeff online. Evening, folks. Oh, they're all muted. Hello, everyone. Live long and prosper, Alan. Hi, Jim. Uh, John and others. I can't, I can't do that. I can only do half of a Vulcan. 
Okay. You can do it twice. You don't want to see your finger right now. Let's table that for next time. All right. Uh, let's see. Tell you what, let me. Uh, all right. Said so anybody can. Everybody. Anybody can share their screen now. Who's in the chat? I just said who's in the room. I'm gonna share the agenda. So. For the recent past, uh, we had a public night on November 19th. Um, first, my memory is that, was, that the night that the uh, scout troop came? Was that the night where uh, PV was there? P or PV. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that went very well. Yeah. Yeah, that was the. Uh, when I was looking at uh, looking at Jupiter through the uh, the four inch that I've got, it was the first time I could ever use my four point eight millimeter eyepiece and actually have a clear image. So I was really pretty clear there. That was really surprising. Yes, very good night. Any any other memories from that night? <laughs> <clears throat> well, and then we had our annual banquet at uh, the uh, Royal Dinner, the Royal Dynasty, following Monday, and food was good. It's a very informal meeting, um, and we. Basically, had an I or nay vote for the uh, new officers for 2023. So Jeff and Jim and I remained in our positions while John Baker was elected the new treasurer. Say what? Say John Baker was elected the new treasurer. Okay. <laughs> I He's so excited. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> yeah, Jim. Jim mentioned it to me. <laughs> In passing, I guess. Oh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then last Saturday's public night was canceled due to lingering clouds, flurries, and frigid temperatures. And well, now we're basically entering our quiet season for astronomical activities. Yeah. Too darn cold. <laughs> kind of gonna get even colder on weather. Yep. All right. Well, although it's also saying that next week it may warm back up to at least near freezing or so. <clears throat> and I guess we'll just wait and see what the weather's like on January 21st for our next scheduled public night. Now, I, I do want to, sorry, if someone about to say something. I did you get the chair. Oh. Well, anyway, I do want to reiterate that they do not plow on the grounds around the observatory at the Watts River Center. So if there's a lot of snow on the ground, any sort of public event out there is off. As soon as they're showing up the snow over there. <laughs> that would be the only way. Yeah. All right. And then, I, I, well, not, not too early to mention our next uh, big public event is the Messier Marathon. That's, cur that's currently scheduled for the night of March 18th through 19th. I believe we also have uh, 
public night scheduled in January, February, and March is along with what you have there? In February and March, yes. As, uh, when's, when's the first one for St. Ambrose? Oh, that's not until May. Yeah, the, the calendar went out some months ago, so I don't know where I'd have to look for it again. Well, I, I can do that right now. Well, I was just, was just curious. Well, why would it be in May? I mean, are the school ending or classes ending by then? That's, that's the reason. Okay, so our public nights in February is on the 18th. And then March 25th is the public night for that month. But yeah, so if anybody can see it, this is our calendar for events of 2023. So yes, uh, St. Ambrose's first public night is on May 13th, which if I remember is the Saturday to the four finals. Or won't be studying anyway. <laughs> on the Saturday night, probably, I'll yeah, probably not. Yeah. Um, are there any comments on the uh, 2023 calendar up here? I don't see the calendar showing. You know? Sharing screen, it should be up there. Yes. Are you just sharing the one window, Robert? Yeah, wait a minute. I get and well, here, let me stop for now, then I'll try starting up again. Uh, does that work? We got it. Okay. So I want to thank Jeff for uh, doing most of the work to put this calendar together. So, you know, Reese and I were star party, set it up there, a meter shower party. Um, refresh my memory, Our Lady of Prayer Retreat, where it's a, is that a private event? Yeah, that's uh, at uh, the observatory. Okay. Any, any other comments on this? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, as you probably heard, we got this huge snowstorm coming up toward the end of the week. So who bought the new gear? <laughs> I got a new auto guy. Guilty this time. One, one at a time, please. Well, I, I can I can make kind of a comment. I haven't bought anything, but I did see um, an advertisement for some. Uh, I believe they're Astrotech eyepieces, and there are several of them. There's a couple that kind of caught my eye, but I really I don't think they're going to do me much good. Um, but they have like a, a 13 and a 20 and I think a 28. And they're uh, 100 degree eyepieces. And they sell for 250 bucks. If anybody's interested in, you know, really super wide, that's, you know, it's not not expensive and, and they seem to have some some pretty good uh, uh, pretty good reviews 
So, I mean, for $250, that's quite a bit less than, you know, the other guys. And I've got, I've got like a 28 millimeter that's 85 degrees. The difference isn't, all, isn't that much, I don't, I don't think, so we're gonna, Cecil, did you say they have a 30 millimeter? That's I, think it, I think it's a 28, I think. Okay. But it's, it's, it's an AstroTech. If you, if, you, uh, if you Google it, um, you have to like Google AstroTech 100 degree eyepiece. They've got several of them. <laughs> said they, they seem to have pretty good reviews. And somebody said they were a copy of somebody else's. So you know how that goes. They everybody steals everybody else's ideas. But uh, yeah and they look very similar to the television. Uh, let's see. Nine, seven, thirteen. I couldn't remember all the nine focal lengths. Four point eight. I don't see anything. Oh, it's a little sad. It, it's it's a it's a twenty eight, isn't it? No twenty eight. I see a twenty, but I don't see a twenty eight. Okay, I thought they had a twenty eight. But anyway, I thought that if somebody's interested in real wide angle eyepieces, it's not going to break the bank. <coughs> okay, yeah, no, I don't see anything. Okay, I mean, a, a nine millimeter would be interesting for sure. Nine and twenty. Seven, thirteen. And the last time I looked, I think the twenty wasn't. It sold out. <clears throat> anyway, I just thought I'd pass that along. Anyone else? Okay, John. What did you say you bought? I have a auto guider that I can attach to my telescope now, which works pretty slick. And I'm gonna, I, I bought a new auto guider camera, which should be arriving tomorrow. So I'm gonna try my off axis guiding again on my new telescope. But uh, before, in order to focus it, after I'd already got everything set up and put my laptop in the classroom, I had to keep going outside and back in and out and back in to, check my double check my focus now with the auto focuser i every time i change filters or anything i can just go through the auto focus routine and it makes it pinpoint perfect i use uh, nina for that <coughs> mm, <excuse me. coughs> Anyone else? That's all I need now. For a Celestron C Gem 2. Celestron C Gem 2? Yep. Got to use it once before it had two gold. <laughs> yeah. What scope did you put on it? My age. I don't know if Travis is there yet, but I think he got a new eyepiece. Yeah, I just didn't want to talk to everyone. I got a Bader Hyperion Mark IV finally after uh, bumming up a Struby's for almost a whole year. So mostly set in a box, but I was able to take it out a little bit last night. What was that again? Uh, I got a Bader Hyperion Mark IV eyepiece. It's a variable eyepiece, variable oh, zoom. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. 
<clears throat> Zoom. It's a good time. You got the Zoom. Yep, exactly. Yeah, those are nice. I'm a big fan. Someone on a budget, I like the Zoom feature because it uh, replaces a number of eyepieces that I couldn't afford for just one I can't afford. <laughs> so it's pretty nice. I like it. Alan, are you posing next to your telescope for any particular reason? Yeah, this is a new telescope to uh, pack. This is one that was donated to the club. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. This is a uh, 10 inch LX200 F6.3 wide field telescope that was donated to the club. Uh, and I've I've been working on it for the last uh, couple of months to refurbish it and get it functional again. The electronics were uh, not operational. I had to strip that out and work on that. But it uh, seems to be working now. I want to take it out and try it a few more times before I'm sure I got it licked. But it seems like it's uh, back in operation now. It's a nice scope. A year for sale. Once, twice, going twice and a half, twice and three quarters. What happened? Did, uh, did that one guy purchase the uh, big refractor or did he still have that? The big refractor? Yeah. The big eight inch? Um, I think it's still there. No, he talked about grinding his own lens. I don't know if he's going to do that or not. Did have interest in the guy from the start? Any updates on that? I'll take that as an L. What would you like an update on? Um, Cecil was wondering about the big eight inch scope that's in the, that right now is in the big roll off. <clears throat> okay, so maybe his question was, did, um, oh, his name is escaping me. Uh, the gentleman from central Iowa, did he buy the, the eight inch scope? Is that the question? Yes. Um, the, the club hasn't decided to sell it. Um, I don't know if we did, whether he'd be interested. I think Jeff had talked to him about maybe um, making an offer, but when he realized that uh, there were some members in the club that thought we still should keep it for a while, and Andrew is his name. I think Andrew decided, you know, he didn't want to be too pushy about it, so he just kind of backed off on that and said, let, let me know in the future um, what the club decides to do and also give him an opportunity to look through it. I think he got a chance to look through it at a tree, but he wasn't there at nighttime um, when there was any clear sky. So yeah, the club, so the club still has the scope and uh, I guess we can decide what to do with it going forward. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. 
Well, this brings us to the presentation portion of uh, the meeting. Um, I do, we do want to ask again that if anybody has any ideas for uh, giving presentations or if they'd like someone else in the club to talk about something of interest to them, then please contact the, uh, contact the board and let them know. In the meantime, for tonight, actually, I just had a thought. Did anybody take any pictures or video of the Mars occultation earlier this month? Yes. There it is. <laughs> or an unreasonable facsimile. Doesn't look like Mars to me. Is my microphone on? Yep, we got yes. you. Yeah, I don't know uh, if anybody took any pics that, but I was getting this set up because there was a lot of pictures sent in over the last month or so. So. In the meantime, let's see what you got. Okay, this is an Alan pick. Can you guys see the uh, off to the left of the screen? Uh, then I put your names on here and you can talk about your picks if you want. That one uh, I think is taken by Alan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, this, this is yes. the, you're showing the Orion Nebula now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was taken through the, uh, the new scope I just showed you. That's Eclipse. Oh, that's when I was trying the new uh, L Extreme on that new camera, the Canon 6D Mark II. It looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's one of the last shots I took using that same filler with that TG, or I'm sorry, T4i Canon, which I sold it. <clears throat> That's my attempt at the uh, what is that the jellyfish? Yeah. Again, using that filter, that that L extreme. <clears throat> and the heart nebula and the fish head nebula. Of course, the Orion, that's that L extreme really changes the color of that. I was cutting through some of that glare from uh, the Quad Cities at that point. And the Soul Nebula. Now the Pleiades I took with the L Pro, which is a wider band um, filter. And there's your crab. There again, that was taken with the L Extreme. Nice detail on that one. Yeah, there's the crab again. And the difference between that was the T4i, the first one, this is the 6D unmodified. <clears throat> Same thing, crab zoomed in. Uh, M33 with the uh, L Pro filter. Now, are those filters for photograph only? Um, I don't, yeah, pretty much. I don't think you're going to get any gain out of it visually. 
Yeah, these are all all for Imogen. Beg your pardon? They are all for Imogen. <laughs> and yeah, the Pleiades you, again. You want to be able to pick through them. If you wanted to, they are so dark. That's <clears throat> I can't hear you, Sam. Well, I'm just saying that, that the filters are so dark, you wouldn't be able to see through them. The only reason they work for imaging is because of the long exposure. Right, well, and they only allow certain bands of light to pass to, to conquer right. light pollution is what they're designed to do. They're, they're more for a urban use than a, a out in the, in the rural country. But with the glare we have out there, we're experiencing more and more at Minky um i've been using them because it actually it makes it easier to process the pictures when you don't have the uh the glare and the extra noise it really cuts down on that and makes it much simpler now that is m74 Almost need to crop that in more, but that's what that is. <clears throat> what what telescope are you using? That was the Skywatcher F uh, four Newtonian. There's a little zoom. I don't, oh, there it is. Is that helping? I didn't. I didn't see any improvement here. Okay, I must be not sharing the the right screen. Is that any different? Yeah, I can see the spiral structure better in that frame. Okay. Now, if that turn went off, away, I turn off the lights. Again, this is the L Pro filter. It's getting grainy now. Stars are decent and round anyway. Auto guiding was good. It, it, it jumped we're, backtrack. we're backtracking. Yeah, it, it jumped. The screen changed on me again. Is that one? Is this one? Okay. That's California. I was playing around with that one night. Again, with the L Extreme. I think that was with the T4i. Oh, there it is. The Crescent. There's your, uh, pull your table over. It's, what's that, the Western Vale or Eastern? I can't remember which. I think it's a Western. Witch's Broom. Yeah. That's, that's again, with that L Extreme filter. It, uh, I'm trying to plug that in. Why didn't you plug it in over there? Because that's a wrong question. There's your Eastern Vale. I believe. So the richness and the color really pulls through that filter. There's your North American. So a lot of this is the old stuff I was just trying since I got that filter and just to see what the difference is comparing apples to apples. So but yeah, it's very, there's your helix. The bubble. I think these are three to four or five minutes each, depending on what I was shooting. 
and there's your M52 uh, and the bubble. Cool. Then I've got a few uh, pics that Craig sent in. And I don't know what all he uses for filters on there, but the elephant trunk, he says. And here's his helix. I think these are all taking up at his house. And the lobster claw. Send these off to Sky Telescope. Oh, what is that noise going on there? Who's vacuuming? Ah, thank you. That would be Al. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I lent Craig my uh, Hyperstar and my 11 inch SCT. And that's his mount and scope. So I don't know if he took any of those previous pictures with that setup, but I know he used that for a while. And he kind of liked it. I never did care for the Hyperstar too much, but that was it. George sent this picture. I believe that's the Eclipse also. He uh, took that from his house uh, in Davenport. He lives over by... Um, Genesis East, or no, Genesis West. <clears throat> and Travis, you just set one. Yeah. So I saw that on Facebook earlier today. Kind of embarrassing next to all the other ones, but that's just one I took with my cell phone. Is that through a scope or just with the cell phone? Just, uh, well, it's through the Bader, yeah. Just with my cell phone, I held it up to it and grabbed a quick one. I didn't process it or anything. I just hit, click, and that's what it was. That's the Orion. So. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. You have one of those cell phone adapters to click on that thing? You gave me a little chintzy one, but it's far, far too small for my phone. And then that so. Bader, um, do you have a DSLR? No. Okay, because I think that Bader, the uh, eyepiece unscrews and you can screw or put a bayonet lock and just lock a regular camera right on there. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I might need to borrow uh, Adrian's camera and we can see what we can uh, what we can grab next time we're at Mankey. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I set up outside Coffee Hound. Oh, a little while back and for solar viewing. And I don't know, I think I had about 30 people wandering in and out that took a view. And this is uh, Cecil and I over at the Urban Antique Back Road Fest. We had, a, you know, about the same couple dozen people wandering back and forth. I wonder why this Craig picture went out of order. Here's another Craig one. And Jim, you sent this one over to me. You there, Jim? Yes, I am. Um. I think that's probably taken with a five inch uh, F6 refractor. It's been a little while ago, I'm a little foggy on it. I, you know, I, I thought that, I thought there was too much blue and not enough red, but I hadn't figured out how to uh, change the color balance, but. I think most of that's processed in the Astro Pixel processor. Okay. Lobster claw again. Oop. I hate it when my screen jumps back up. There we go. I 
think we had a mishap opening the roof. So we have to make sure people get trained on that. So I don't know whether uh, we want to wait for warm weather and just have a club event for everybody that wants to be trained or how we want to handle that. Yeah, well, right now that's still the, the condition that the, uh, the winch is in, I believe. I don't know that anybody's done anything to uh, replace the cable or modify it. You know, we do have a, a proposal to look into a, a gear and track system um, that might be able to use that winch. Carl is a, a gentleman from Northern Illinois that's been to our observatories and star parties in the past, quite, a, you know, going back 10 to 20 years ago. But anyway, he uh, he's used the motor and gear portion of that winch and then it added a gear to it with a track. And he's been driving his uh, roll off roof. I think the building is much smaller than ours, maybe 14 feet by 12 feet, 14 by 16 perhaps. Um, but he's been using it for about 10 years successfully. And, you know, he's invited us to uh, pick his brain or even come up and see his, uh, his uh, observatory and this drive system in place to see if maybe that's something that we'd be interested in installing at uh, our observatory. And Carl, you can go and this is one of our, I don't remember that this was a, a private event or if this was one of our publics. Uh, no, is that November 5th? Yeah. That was a private event. Uh, is that the, the scouts? Scouts requested to come and yes, yeah, so I remember that was the, that turned out to be the rain date for the Witt Observatory field trip. So me and Jeff and Sam showed up and Sam talked a little about uh, different kinds of telescopes. I answered any science questions I had. And Jeff talked about the astronomy as a hobby. And then Rusty, you've got a slew of them in here. So I have Andromeda. Oh, God, I can't remember what that one was. This one's B one sixty eight, but I'm not really sure what that is. I think Bacoon. it's a dark nebula around it. Okay. B for Barnard. Uh, I think they're Barnard. Yeah, Barnard. <clears throat> yeah, that's another one of the Barnard. I've been chasing dark nebulas lately. <laughs> LBN 534. Yeah, that's another dark nebula. Make another one there. What are the LDNs? Do you remember the? Oh, the I can't remember what they were. Looks like you just smeared your. Maybe maybe that's an LBN, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, we got LDN and LBN both. Okay. I can't remember what those, those were. Those acronyms, yeah. Find out. There's so many catalogs out there. That's pretty cool though. Look at the, look at the NGC 246. Yep. Seems like it had little squares in there. That's the um, skull, skull nebula. Lynn, Lynn's catalog of dark nebulae. Yeah. L L Y N D S. Which said skull. Yeah. 
MGC 1333. So familiar. NGC 1499. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a little one. <laughs> that's cool. Is that the ghost of Jupiter? That one says oyster on it, NGC 1501. There might be more than one name for it, of course, but. Yeah, I got two of them there of Orion, one with that filter and one without the filter. That's without the filter and that's with it. There. Which was that filter again? Um, that was that one of um, Jim's that I borrowed. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that is the filter that um, Rusty was talking about, the Extreme. Yeah, the one the extreme. Back man. Back man. There's a power pellet. That's a soap bubble. Now it's down the lower left corner. Cool. That's all the pics I got. <laughs> did Did you want to see one of the uh, occultation? Please. I, I thought that's how we started. I never got to it. Let me see if I can uh, do that here. Uh, let's see. Bear with me. Okay, let's see here. Bear. Bear? <laughs> yeah, bear. yeah, bears. I'm bear. <laughs> Smoking the bear? I'll give that oh, cool. Okay, you see that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me see if let me see if I can animate that. I don't know if you're seeing it moving or yeah, not. Yeah, it's working. It's working. That's real time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Almost looks like it's trying to find them. There first it did, yeah. That. That they're, st hard. they're still debating as to what caused that uh, that effect. What effect? They 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 saw they've seen a similar effect during ve Venus transit across the sun. So what about? teardrop yeah the teardrop effect yeah I, I didn't i didn't see that i call it the hot dog effect you put your fingers like this and look past it anyway, there. Uh, i don't know i don't know what you're referring to but then it was gone yeah. so where's the hot, what's the hot dog effect you're talking about 
you put your fingers like this and look past it and it looks like your fingers are touching right there what i don't, I don't know what you're referring it looks to it's almost like right there that mars is going in front of yeah but well, i think that's an artifact oh of sure pixelation well there's a yeah you know that's not true but, i mean if it was we'd be in big trouble <laughs> yeah but uh, but but it'd be a little bigger than it. <laughs> so if you were watching this visually and not watching the video, could you see the same effect? Probably not. I don't know. Hmm. Good question. I think this is I think this is a pixelation effect here. Could be. Hmm. That's anyway, it, it's it's cool. It's cool to be able to see the moon actually moving. Yes. Oh, it was not Mars moving behind you. No, they're both moving, I guess. They're both moving, <laughs> but from our perspective, the moon the moon would have been moving a bit faster. Or Mars would be moving faster. Oh relative. They're probably moving faster. It's just too far for to, to have any effect. Yes. Oh yeah, I, I was I was able to see it through my uh, binoculars from where I was, but then fog haze moved in, and I wasn't able to see Mars reemerge. Was that was anyone able to see Mars reemerge? It would have been about an hour later. That would be scary if Mars doesn't show up again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> The moon age Mars. <laughs> uh, any other pictures? I have some that I uh, took if I can share my screen. Should be able to. Uh, let's see here. Okay. That is, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah. Yes. The hydrogen alpha um, picture of uh, IC405, whatever that is. That's and the flame that the, the flame, okay. And then here's the high, uh, oxygen, the O3 version of the same thing. Not a whole lot of O3 there. And uh, sulfur too. It's a little bit. So the hydrogen alpha came out the the most on that. And then let's see what else do I have here? That's real good. A lot of detail. It's very good. Thank you. Uh, the jellyfish nebula. I think it's a jellyfish over here, and then uh, there's something else over here. I forget what it is. No. Brain, a jellyfish, amoeba. 
and uh, the Seagull Nebula. Seagull, you said? Sea Seagull. Seagull. Oh, wow. And it's all hydrogen alpha there. Something right over there, too. So there's something here, too. But it did some photo bomb. <laughs> Obama, oh. Now, how many stacks do you have on that, John? Um, I think that is just these here. Um, Is about 20 hydrogen alpha, couple O3, and a couple a few uh, sulfur twos. So there are five minute exposures. Yeah, some of them are five minutes, some of them the very first one looks like uh 500 seconds, which is what, four minutes? And then what else do I have here? Uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy. What scope is that taking with? It's uh, got a focal reducer on my, my uh, Astrotech 130. Okay. So it's. There's another yeah, galaxy another here on the right. What's the one on the right next to it? Yeah. This here? Oh, well, you got a couple. There's another one. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Yep. And maybe that fuzzy one down there might be just just below that second, just below the second one. Oh, you, one. you may have got a whole galaxy cluster. Yeah, yeah. There's, I can see yes, yeah, several. Yeah, that's pretty see good. One there. There's another one. Yeah, there are a few of them out there, aren't there? Yeah, there are. John, you discovered some galaxies that nobody knew about. Yeah, the, ba the Baker Deep Field. <laughs> the Bakerian chain. Yeah. So that's one or not. Yeah, 51. Hmm. It still amazes me the fact that one galaxy is basically absorbing the other one, but there is no collision because they are so far, objects are so far apart, they don't collide. Or do you think there's a possibility? In the individual stars? Colliding with other? Pra practically none. That is amazing to me. Actually, actually I ex explain this to my astronomy class all the time with an analogy. Like, say, take two billiard balls. All right. So imagine each one's the size of an average star. 
for that same scale, the average separation between those two would be like having one billiard ball in your hand and the other one in Omaha. Are they that far apart? They look so close. That far, they're that far apart. What's this one? Uh, the Sunflower Galaxy. Oops. <laughs> it kind of, kind of reminds me back in the back in the eighties. Um, Kodak had a black and white film that was kind of an oddball. It may have been moved, used for movie film or something, but it was really very fine grain. Huh. I mean, you had to uh, process it specially. But their advertisement was they went out and took a picture of just a picture and developed it, and they saw a spot. I mean, basically a spot on the film, and they enlarged it, and you could tell that it was a commercial jet. It was so fine grained that when you enlarged it by 30 times, you could still see the detail of that jet. Wow. That's kind of what that reminds me of is that, you know, you're just taking a picture and all of a sudden you blow it up, you still have some. Um, you still have enough detail there to see some of these other things. It's pretty neat. I'm sure they've been named somehow. They're their IC numbers or something. Oh yeah, NGC numbers or. Yeah, I have bullets, but I I offloaded them from my laptop to my main computer in the other room. That's all I have now. Very good. There's a website where you can send your pictures to, and it will actually send you information back of everything that's in it. It kind of does like a plain solvent. And it that that is true. Huh? That is true. I forgot about that. Net. Uh... Astro. <clears throat> and I could submit that file. I move this. What was it the wrong thing? Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> That's a lot of reading. Yeah. So she was a file. Oh, it was a that was a fit file. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fit files, they always have a lot of uh, header information in front of them. Yeah, and I need to find special coding in order to read it, read read files like that. And they got fit viewers. You can use, but uh, I don't know when you need to submit to the astronomy astronomy.net. I think it's uh, I don't know if it's PTN or uh, try this again. Right, it says JPEG or what's the other thing? PNG fits or fits. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's maybe it's the difference between fit and fits. It looks like it's the one. <laughs> I'm 
might take a half minute or so to upload. The only bad thing about this new camera I have is the files are all 120 gigabytes each or megabytes each. Okay, it looks like it finished. <laughs> now got it. Oh, 10 minutes. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's still processing it over here. <laughs> it's kind of like a mouse in the center or a rabbit it does or a rabbit <clears throat> two years success right Okay. Where's a bunch of things there? <clears throat> There's a bunch of them, 5169, 5173, 5193. Can't read those. Yeah, can, you, can you make those? Can they make the label smaller or move them aside a little bit? I, just can't I don't know. <clears throat> it's interesting that you've got 61 and 73 close together. How come they're not 69 and 70? Um, different Maybe if I crop it and put it in there. Or expand it. No, I said, it sure that, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff there. That's a nice sequence. Yeah. I guess his name doesn't know anything. Didn't discover. <clears throat> wow. so, the Red, green. Not sure what that stole me. Different stars. <laughs> no, because there's a, a bunch of them that are right star that they didn't discover. Oh, oh wow. Cool. That is very cool. SDSS. Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Uh -huh. What is that? That's this massive survey in the entire sky. It's basically trying to map it. 20 years ago. So how is it? I mean, why is it all the coloration all of a sudden show up? I don't, because I you took a monochrome that. shot, right? I have no idea, idea but this, this is the same coordinates but yeah. through a different telescope yeah like a Ga gale x whatever that is well, a picture of the same location okay but not necessarily using your picture right it's using the coordinates of my picture okay mm. yes yeah. now we unwise this is where they destroy your is <laughs> why it's unwise to click on yeah. that <clears throat> The spectral analysis, cool. Huh. It's like a COVID map.
Yeah, that's all I know. What was that? Oh, that's pretty neat because it, it labels all of the all the other galaxies or whatever it's there. Yeah. It's pretty neat. That didn't take very long. How big's the file? Uh 119 megabytes. Okay. But it didn't take yeah. very long to process it. What's that? It didn't take long to process it. I have a six core machine in my office that I'm using right now to process it. I'm in the process of building a new, uh, what is the I9 13900K, uh, which has got like 24 threads or 32 chips or something like that, I forget. Because <clears throat> I was running Nina or running uh, Astro Pixel processor the other day, and it just took forever to. I mean, it worked, but it just takes forever, even, even with my six core um, 12 thread machine and uh, 64 gigabytes of memory. I wonder what the sunflower would look like. Is that Astro Pixel better than, let's say, um, Serial or Deep Sky Stacker? It's yes, especially when you're doing a mosaic. Here's what the seagull says here. Yeah, Astro Pixel processor will, if you're doing a mosaic, it'll, it'll, find where it all fits together it does a pretty good job of that and then it'll smooth out where the overlaps are so it looks like one continuous picture now mosaics is like doing kind of like plate solving right yeah yep it works it just takes a darn long time especially with these big files Well, the, the mosaic uses plate solving frequently to position the camera slightly different. But basically what you're doing is saying, taking multiple images to um, cover a larger area of the sky. Right. So maybe you take four images. And so you're going to get quite a bit more field of view. Right. Depending yeah. on how much overlap you have on them. Yeah. And then it combines them that you know, so you take the pictures and see um, astro pixel processor will stitch them together correct and so blend tells, them together so what tells the mount though how far to move to put that together because i mean that would have to be pretty specific when you're putting yeah, in well, uh, what, what I've been doing is, is taking multiple days or sessions uh, images, and they're off a little bit from the last time I did it. And uh, or sometimes I'll purposely, especially on the seagull, I'll, I'll go to different parts of the sky to, to find so I can get the whole thing in there. So my answer to your question, Byron, would be you can manually, you know, pick the coordinates that you want the camera to move or where you want each image to be centered. 
and, and you'd have to do some calculation to think of the field of view that you have and whether that's going to give you the appropriate overlap. Or you can use a program like Sequence Generator Pro. Um, I think Nina probably does it, probably other programs that will, you just, you, you uh, graphically, you use, you know, just draw a little box. Here's where I want image one to be, and here's where I want image two to be, and so forth. And then it points the camera for it. Or the, well, okay. So I imagine that'd be a time time consuming task to do on your own. Yep. Yeah, I would think so. So it, it's really easy on something like Sequence Generator Pro. Sure. Once you know how to use the, the program and you have it. And I think John has used Nina. I assume Nina will do a similar thing, John. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has used other programs that will do that for you. But then, then you still have the consuming part, like John said, uh, you're going to take, you know, four times as many images. And if, if you were shooting through multiple filters, you've just really multiplied the number of uh, images you have to take quite a bit. Okay, yeah, here's a mosaic of just two different days worth of data, I think, or maybe it's just this. Yeah, I don't remember if this was two different days worth of data or just uh, some of the same day that some of them were off a little bit. So that's probably not a mosaic. That's probably just. Two no, it's, a, it's a mosaic. Okay, um, you cr created those. But but it does a really good job at hiding mm. the uh, scene. I was getting that earlier. Let's see uh, this one. <clears throat> and down here, you don't you don't see any lines. Oh yeah. Okay, see what you mean. You don't see a line through there or up here very much, I don't think. It does it just does a really good job of uh, meshing them together. Yeah, it looks pretty seamless to me. But doing that takes a lot of extra crunching. Uh, let's see. This one ever upload success. Oh, wow. Something else down here, I just don't have enough of it. Doesn't assign anything to that, and I know there's something there. Something there. Yeah, I use this uh, website, this astrometry.net. If I took some pictures and I wasn't didn't remember where they were or what they were, I just feed it in here, and it'll. Show me exactly what it was I was trying to take a picture of. Yeah, that's all I have. 
Very nice. Thank you. Swinton. Okay. Okay. All right. What next? All right. Now then, next is the treasurer's report. For the last time, Sam. Okay, so the general fund, and that's including the fees that I got from Cecil and uh, Rusty today, um, stands at 33.2880. The event funds hasn't changed, 327.30. The observatory relocation is at 10,181.96 for a total of 13,838.06. Discussion? Questions? Questions? Well, there's been talk about putting up a, what, a control center. Control room, yes. Control room. Yeah. Where exactly would that be? Um, good question. We've had the um we've been debating whether to put it on the north side of the building or on the west side, such that the roof would roll off over it since otherwise that ground is not being used for anything oh, okay because there is you know there, there, there's at least some money there to possibly start something i don't know how much it's going to cost <clears throat> well, it might be enough to build a structure yeah so what's going to go in the control center computers um, eventually uh, controlling uh, like, like a master control room for the telescopes on site. Because okay. you're, you're going to have, you're only going to have one controllable scope in the new bowl, aren't you? Uh, right now, yes. Right now. Would that also control what's in the dome? Um, they're probably sweet. look into setting it up that way. Which don't? Either don't. Twelve and a half inch. I don't know how well that would set up for remote control for the fourteen inch. That would be no problem. We probably we might we might be uh, we'd have to double check on how strong the Wi-Fi signal is between the new roll off and the rest of the facility. I mean, if you're only going to operate one scope, what's the point of the control room? Well, I think the intent would be to be in a nice and comfy room. That is heated while the roof is open. But if, if, if that is not a problem for you, I guess you don't need it. You well, could, I wouldn't you, anyway. could, you could you could just stand next to the scope and control it from there. Well, you might you're not going to control mine anyway. No, but I'm talking about the one that is controllable. Yeah. Oh, we're not you get just this curious. So at least that, if that room is warm, you at least have a place to. I I suggest that that in order to save money, we could have the control inside, use two of the walls on the corner, and just add two other walls in order to have a room inside the building itself, so that because I mean it's a big building. I don't know if we need all that room. To move one telescope. 
I mean, if we had more telescopes, I don't know, maybe. But as it stands right now, that will be an option. Since we seem to be segueing into the observatory relocation portion of the meeting, right? Um, do I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So I. We got two who moved. Do I have a second? Aye. Along those seconds, all in favor? Aye. 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 Report is approved. So to continue with observatory relocation, are there any updates? Well, what, what was the problem with the uh, with the roll off? What well, was the problem with the roll off? What was the problem with the roll off? Someone want to feel that? I think Steve might be able to answer that one. Oh, you mean that problem? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff, can you put up that picture of the winch with the cable? Okay. And also my little, uh, the laptop I'm using right now, once the cooling fan kicked on, I can no longer see the picture if you're sharing. I don't know what's where it went. So if you're sharing some uh, the picture, I can't see it. But So you let me know when you're sharing. Can, you, can anybody see my picture or no? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I see it. No. It's okay, uh, somebody so, holding a, a shredded cable. Holding a broken cable. All right, let me let me find it on my phone here, and then. But uh, so what happened here was, um, to make to make a long story longer, you know, we had I was up there, uh, assisting maybe mm -hmm. once or twice, for a couple hours, and I thought I was knowledgeable about the observatory enough to go up there and sneak sneak a peek and i had seen jim operate the roof uh, a few times and i didn't i felt confident enough especially since there was one other person up there with me which is usually the rules you know you don't open the roof unless there's somebody there just in case and you know the other observatory i've opened up dozens and dozens of times with the manually uh, with the manual method, which was just those pull ropes that we've used. Okay, but uh, so are, are you showing that photo? Yes. yes. Okay, so if you look at that photo, what happens is, is the way that that is set up, okay, and this is with the lights on, not the lights off, okay, and I'm going to try to find that photo myself here, but <laughs> the, the spool for the cable is on the left-hand side, okay? And I found the I found the observatory pictures here. All right. Oh, here it is. Okay. So now I'm looking at it. But and you can see that there is a newer style on the left hand side of the picture there. There's a left, there's a new board that kind of goes up and down. And this is something that we haven't had before. We've just used the four corner method where you either have the turnbuckles or whatever they were. And now I think what we're just using ratcheting straps and the ratcheting staff straps are usually brightly colored or camouflage colored. So they, they stick out like a sore thumb. But here you can see is that the, this, this board, this two by four that goes up and down, it just, it, um, it blends in with the background. And then the hardware also blends in with the, uh, the other hardware, the, the pieces that keep the, uh, the trusses together. I don't know what they're called. And then you stand on the right hand side of the picture because the spool is on the left hand side okay and then so you naturally do that and then so the uh, the mounting board which is this big uh, what six by six or an eight by eight board and the uh the winching mechanism covers up it actually hides this this pin that goes up and down okay so you're blind to it 
So, you know, and that is being, that's just because that the, the building is, is, uh, you know, it's new, you know, it's not really opened yet. Okay. So we, what we had done is we had released five of the six, uh, hold downs on the, on the observatory, but I didn't get this one because I was blind to it when the lights were on. Now that the lights are off, I still don't see it. And what happened is the cable just quickly snapped. There was no, there was no delay. It just pushed the button and boop. Instantly. It went, yeah, it, it was truly instant. There was no buckling of the building. There was no time delay. There was nothing. It was just push button, click. And, but, uh, but also let me add, I was on the east end unbuckling and the uh, center post on that end had been left undone. So the only thing that was, as far as the, uh, the two by fours that he's speaking of was only on the west end was actually in position. The other one had been left down. So, um, and I was actually, I won't say I was injured, but my, my, I've got a, I had a sore thumb for a couple of days and uh, I think that's, it's a very thin cable there. And it, 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 again, it was, there was no delay push button click. That was it. And I mean, I felt terrible about it, but then uh, we were able to just go ahead and just buckle the building right back together again with the four corners. And, uh, but this looks, it's easy enough to fix because it's just a, what do they call it? Swedging? You have to swedge the cable. You can get replacement cable at Farmer Fleet. Yeah, any yeah, anybody has has the replacement parts for this. The question was that I didn't do that. It was going up to, I guess Jim had mentioned uh, getting a specialized cable. Um, you know, but I got you know I worked at I work at Lowe's. You know what I'm saying? And we got all the stuff. But I've I've held off doing anything because they talked about getting specialized cable or going up to the next size of cable. So I just have held off. And besides, the weather has been you know it's cold. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to go out there. So Rusty the and I are, are going to go to uh, Rockford to visit a, a person named Carl. I think his name was Jim, who has a roll off roof design that uses a. Um, a winch like that, but instead of a cable, he's got a, a pulley attached to it with a belt up to another bar that has teeth on it that will uh, pull the roof off. It'll be a, a bar going all the way down the length of the roof and it'll pull it that way. Um, Although I suppose you could still have the same problem if everything was locked up and you tried doing it. So the cable is the weakest link. So if you put a heavier duty cable on it, will the motor burn, burn up? Uh, or to pull the wall down, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a belt system, it will would... just smoke the belt. Right. Right. That'd be your safest bet than having a sprocket or something where, yeah, you're going to push the limit. The belt will yeah. just. So in this case, it worked the way it's supposed to, uh, safely. Is that an AC or a DC motor? Beg your pardon? No, is, is it an AC, AC or DC? That's an AC one. Yeah, it's oh, AC. Okay. AC yeah. motor. would be nice if it was AC, you could probably put a nice fuse in there or something so that <clears throat> give it some time to. So that that cable just missed my head, by the way, too. Yeah, I mean, we both got it. I'm surprised it did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand. <laughs> hey, you, you amuse you, Sam. <laughs> it was so funny they forgot to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my, my comment here in this, I know this is going to be unpopular, but I'm just asking the, the group to think about it is that, you know, our, our, our other roof was a lightweight, a smaller roof, and it was a lighter weight roof. We didn't have the, uh, the, 
the the plywood sheets you didn't have the weight of the uh, of the roofing shingles okay but there's a video that Jeff put out that where the guy was up there and the weight of the roof was up there and one man was able to push that roof you know and it doesn't look like he's killing himself and then now we've got a little bit more weight up there <laughs> with the shingles there were there are actually two people though Steve there was one on each side you can't see that second one oh really yeah okay well maybe I'm all wet but my my idea was just to go ahead and just put both of you know once the you know the roof does bind on the northwest corner and the southeast corner okay and um that's with the um what do you call that the uh the siding up, up underneath the the roof there and um if we can get that relieved because that's acting like a break okay and that's i think that's the main reason why that why why a a winch is needed and my feeling is and i don't know how popular it would be is to um once that the the tension is relieved on the roof was to put those two uh hand what do you want to call them those those the two grab bars that I have, put one on each side and see how hard it is to pull after that. Can two people manually roll the roof off back and forth once the uh, the braking has been relieved? Yeah, we did do that. But the once braking, but loose, the braking, the braking, well, you and I did it with the, the pole, you mean, to put well, it back together? Jim and I and who all was involved, Jim? I mean, yeah, but, yeah, but, the, really, us, but yeah. the real but the tension hasn't been relieved on the roof. Right. Though. It took the, okay. all of us to relieve that, get past that point, and then yeah. two of us were able to push it. But yeah, then we could put it back. It took all of us to shove it back to the point where it could be buckled down and braced. Yeah, yeah. Jim, Jim and I measured that with a scale. And what was it that trying to get it? started with a little over 200 pounds and then once it was going it was like 80 something pounds if i remember right remember jim yeah the, i was remembering you know maybe a little over 100 but um once it was moving so you so you're right. you know in the neighborhood of 200 pounds of force so so it's not a it's not a terrible amount of force to even initiate movement and then less to keep it moving it's just that the leverage that you know any of us currently have to be able to pull on it, as Byron said, uh, you know, two of us tried to put ropes on it and just pull standing from the ground, and we couldn't get it to move. Uh, but with four of us, we were then able to get it to move. But we deemed that four was going to be an unrealistic number to say that you would always have there to move it. So that's why we look for a different way to move it. Now, Steve has talked about during, during um, all of that that we've described, um, there was some binding where the, um, the soffit rubs against the sidewalls. And we asked the contractor to come back and relieve that. I, I can't tell you it's perfect. And I can't tell you that there won't be some shifting, but, it, but he, he did modify that to, to open up a gap so that there's less drag. Now, since we've done that, I don't think anybody has uh, moved the roof to be able to evaluate how much did that help. But yeah, Steve, whenever um, we can get the weather to cooperate and some people to go out, <clears throat> you, can, you can take a look at it. But when the contractor was there, he did modify it. so that has been accomplished so it'll be interesting to see how much better it is okay well i didn't know that there's anybody that had been up there so i'm so it'll be interesting to see how how you know how much effort it takes to, to move that roof back and forth yeah i don't i don't think it's it might make a 20 percent improvement i don't think it's going to cut it in half for example but we'll see yeah, you know what? When I used that uh, that feeler gauge, which was just the uh, carpenter square up there, I mean it was tight, you know. So we'll see. Yeah, he's you know he's changed it so there it's much looser. But I 
<laughs> so anyway, so anyway, so even in the day, I think the point I was saying is even in the fully, you know, in the daylight, it's just the way that that um, that piece. So that was that was causing is that one of the one of the pins or whatever you want to call it, one of the lockdowns was not released, and that was the main one, hmm. and it did its job. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, it's a, it's a winch that costs less than $200, but I guess I would have assumed that they would have designed it such that the, the failure point would not be a breaking of a cable. Yeah, you and me both. It, it yeah, would some, be that, that the electronics would, would break, yeah. would, would uh, you know, the circuit would break, and get, oh, something would heat, a fuse or something would go uh, where the motor would stop working before you just had enough power to just break that that cable. Yeah. yeah, I think that that cable was rated at. It, it's the they say this on swedging is, is that it's four times the. So the I think that uh, it's it's like one or two thousand. I think it's two thousand pounds on that diameter cable. And uh, I didn't think that 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 motor was able to produce that much power. So. I think it's just a cheese whiz cable. Well, you got to be careful the way they rate. Yeah. Them. I mean, I think they talk about it'll move a two thousand pound vehicle, but that doesn't mean two thousand pounds of force. They're 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 it's a marketing thing mm. I th because when they actually talk, if you were going to raise a weight off of the ground, you know that thing is only rated for somewhere in the two to four hundred pounds. But but obviously that motor can apply. A lot of a lot of force. Well, one yeah, thing if that had a stuck vehicle, it'd have failed. <clears throat> one thing I noticed on that though, when I was out there looking at it after it had broke, was the the drum roll roller on that winch sits below the edge, so that cable's raking on the edge of that, and that's galling that that edge of that uh, winch pretty badly, which is going to tear that cable up. Yeah, you know, we wanted the uh, we wanted it to be able to pull the roof in both directions. So when you're pulling it in one direction and then you reverse it to the other, the cable rotates 180 degrees. Yeah, you can and, put two rollers in that. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the cable go between them, so it goes yeah. over the roller and straight up instead of supposed to out the side, which it yeah, relieves a lot of the tension on that. Yeah, that, that device could be modified, but we just, you know, installed it the best way we could without making modifications to it. And, and yeah, you know, it rubbed against that. Okay. Uh, anything, anything else on the, about the observatory? Any other questions? Because uh, I still need to get out there and, and put the light switches in by the door there, get those hooked up. I haven't done that yet. Okay. Well, I, I've got a question. Do you, do you still foresee using this kind of a winch and cable? Just, just call me nervous in case somebody comes in there, you have a a club come in and all of a sudden that snaps again and hits some kid in the head. What the hell are you guys going to do? Or what the hell yeah. is the club going to do? Right. No, no, we're, we're, we're looking at a, a different, a pulley type system mm -hmm. and a, a rack and gear type system. Sure. Yeah, this uh, cable thing was only, only going to be temporary until we had a permanent solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's, let's not waste any time coming up with a permanent solution. But that is a valid point, point Rolando. I mean, okay, so you're having, a, you're having somebody, do you know what these new gear and sprocket uh, or worm gear, whatever, what is that going to cost? Do you know at all? Uh, Jim, do you have any idea on that? I think Jim already bought the sprocket, didn't you? Well, okay. Let's say um, 
there there are a couple of commercially available options okay um one of them was the individual that we've tried to get a hold of that has built a lot of observatories we haven't been able to get a hold of him or he hasn't responded to our request the the we talked to another company in tucson arizona who said they would produce one and the price they quoted us was $3,800. Ooh. That's probably about what the Scott Horstman one would cost by the time you um, got all the components. Uh, well, you got the heavier duty version because what he shows on his website is a lighter duty version for a more typical sized observatory, not as big as ours. So that's kind of, if you could buy a commercially available one that we thought we were going to be satisfied with, you know, maybe $4,000. Um, and then if you wanted to automate it, those probably some additional costs. On the other hand, what this Carl, who's located in up by Rockford, um, has built, he basically took the the winch like we have, removed the cable, put a gear, no, put a pulley on the output of the winch and put another pulley attached to a shaft so that a belt drives those two pulleys. So now the motor, the winch motor is spinning a shaft and that shaft, he attached a gear to it. And that gear rides on a track that has, a, a, you know, teeth spinning the length of the observatory. Yeah. So it's similar to what those of us that went to um, the, Bet not Bettendorf, <laughs> a Burlington Observatory and saw what they had. Rusty was there, John. Um, they had a similar system, but they used a chain instead of a rack of gears. So looking at what Carl had and doing a little bit of research and finding somebody that had some of these parts on the eBay for a few hundred dollars, I bought an, enough track to get us started. I think I got like 26 feet. So it wouldn't be the whole 28 or the whole 30 plus feet that we would need. So, you know, potentially if we did, if, we, if it was a do, or, do it your own uh, system, we might be able to get it by a lot. Less. Thanks for the photo. Um, so what has uh, been displayed there is this Carl's Observatory, and you've got, yeah, you've got the winch that looks very similar to what we have, and then you can see there's a little cursor arrow that Jeff is probably moving up and down there. A belt, yeah. Shows the two different pulleys and a belt that drives those. And on the left-hand side is a sprocket. Yeah, on that shaft spins, and then you look at the left-hand side is the, the gear. Mm -hmm. What what you don't see in that photo is this track of like a horizontal gear. I don't know what the right terminology for it is. I think they call it a flat gear. A flat gear. Okay. I think that's what they call that. About um, about a quarter of an inch thick, about an inch tall, and that gets bolted to the roof. So, Jeff, can you? show any of the other photos that show that that long gear yeah i'm trying to find it that's it's me jim that's sure okay john screen. thanks but I, I all i see is this one i know they're out there somewhere so so the way carl designed his mm -hmm. is his roof can roll free of that gear so his the roof is pushed um further off right there's no contact with it yeah you would you would have to manually pull his roof 
towards us, towards the cameraman. Uh-huh. And, and then pretty soon the gear that's hidden from our view, this long rack gear, would, would come in contact with a, I don't know if that's a spur gear, if that's the right terminology, but the gear that's pinion. In, yeah, pinion gear. And the then pinion. once pinion. that comes in contact the with the pinion system. Yep. Yeah, once, once you started to uh, run the motor, it, it would rotate and drive the, uh, the, the roof into the closed position. And then you reverse it and it opens up again. Um, and so, you, yeah. can, you know, if you, as you look at the components, you, you know, he's got this rectangular black thing and he's got a pin where he locks his uh, observatory in the closed mm -hmm. position. When he's done rolling the roof back closed again, um, he's got a way to this. The winch, the red winch, pivots so that he can tighten the pressure on his uh, belt by the turnbuckle. A turnbuckle there, and that tightens that thing down. So, as we didn't want to get into designing our own. Um, we hadn't we hadn't spent the money to buy one that we felt real comfortable with spending, you know, thirty eight hundred dollars on, and then once we saw that well, Carl's built this, he's used it for ten years, and you know he's a, he would allow us to come up and look at his. I even asked him, would you help us build ours? He said, well, I'm retired. But I have a I, I have some disability with a injured knee, so he said I can't take it on to tell you I'm just going to build your your device for you. But you know, I think I think what that meant is we went up and talked to him, and he got to know us a little better. You know that he might at least be willing to help us with it. So with that, I have a little more comfort in trying to do something on our own, and that's why I went ahead and bought those parts, thinking. If nothing else, for a few hundred dollars, we've we've got this rack, and we can we can vi better visualize how this might work for us. Is is that is his building as big as ours? No. So it's smaller. Yeah. No. I I I think his is maybe fourteen by sixteen feet. So you know, probably half the square footage. Maybe I'm wondering the size of our roof, how well that would work on the side. Right. You know, we have to keep it on the center. We're going to have to run it to both sides. Right. Otherwise, it'll bind. Yeah, either, yeah, like you said, put two motors on it, one on the right side, one on the left side. And... Well, either that or just one long shaft. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, those are, those are some of the conversations that we had with this other company. Jeff and I talked to him from Tucson. You know, he was kind of talking back and forth. What would it be adequate to just drive it from one side? You know, the advantage in being on the side is you're closer to the, the wall or the corner, so you have some strength. Um, and so, as Rusty had said, if you had a 24-foot long drive shaft with a gear on each end, mm -hmm. that would be an op an option the other one would be as long as the uh, the 24 foot wall was strong enough or is supported enough that we could leave the winch where it currently is right now it's about in the middle of the wall and if this motor was put there maybe you could run the rack uh, the length of the the rough and now you'd be driving it in the middle. So, so those are some design decisions I think they're going to have to be made. Yep. Well, I think in the center you'd be just fine as long as it had the the gumption to do it. Okay. I mean, yeah, and you know we've we've got it right now. We have it supported from both the outside and the inside, coming at an angle, and. Well, we, we ran an experiment where we put enough force on it to break the cable and we didn't. Right. So That's my all. opinion. So there, there's some evidence that we've got it pretty strong. The, the wall itself, you know, without any kind of support, 
that 24 foot long wall, you know, is kind of is flexible. So that that's the concern about it. But we think we've made that pretty strong. Yeah, I think we'd we'd want to con, you know do some more to convince ourselves of that. Okay. Like that. There's a picture of the sprocket that Jim has right now. Yeah, so that's that's um, sections of the uh, the gearing that that uh, just like what Carl has, um, and then the, the the sprocket or the gear the gear happens to be nylon. You know that people will use either metal or nylon ones, and I bought the nylon because it was cheap. It was twelve bucks. Whether it would hold up. I don't know, but at least it was a, you know, I don't know even know if the output shaft, the hole is going to be correct, uh, but it was a place to get started without investing a lot of money. With the way, uh, Jim, you stiffened up, like I suggested, between the trusses in the middle, I really think that, uh, you know, if you got a good mount on the rack that, you uh, it's definitely strong enough to pull the whole thing. And then you don't, don't have to have two tracks of gears on the north and south wall. And uh, if, if you were to go up there and feel how strong that really is after those two by fours were put in between each truss through the middle, uh, and then maybe one long two by four, the whole length on the top of those trusses, I, I just don't see anywhere where it's gonna go. I've only, it's only a few minutes before nine. So does, that, does anybody have anything else urgently needs to bring up? No, I don't have anything. Um, I'll just wait before I leave. I want to thank uh, Sam Santiago for doing a fabulous job as our treasurer. I mean, it's not a fabulous, but. <laughs> and welcome John Baker as our new treasurer. Um, you and Sam will get together to exchange. We have to get together and do a, some transfer sometime. Yes. So, all right. We need to figure that out. I'll, I'll leave that to you. So, if there's nothing else, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. We have a second. Second. Right, second. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Well, you celebrate? Festivus for the rest of us. The rest of us. <laughs> yes, Kwanzaa. <laughs> <once. laughs> All right. Happy. Merry Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas, everybody. Later. See you. All right. Good night. 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 <laughs> um. How do I turn this off? Um, well, have a safe night. Thank you. Good night. Soon. Okay. There it is. Oh, I'm out. All right. Oh, Rusty? Yep. Oh, oh, later. I'm doing one. Yep. Very, very Christmas. Yep, you too. Merry Christmas. <laughs>